this most recent Easter Sunday, I was having a shave in the bathroom and I was listening to my little, on my little radio to the Easter Sunday morning service, which this year came from Canterbury Cathedral. And I heard a lady say seven incredible words and I've printed them out for you. So just bear with me as I put them out. And these were the words. <clears throat> but go, tell his disciples and Peter. Seven of the most incredible words that you've ever heard, Stuart. You're joking. You're right, I'm joking. It was two of the most incredible words I've ever heard. And they were the last two. And Peter. Let me just give you a little bit more context for this statement. It was early on the morning after the Sabbath. Jesus had been crucified and buried. And three women were making their way to the tomb with the purpose of anointing Jesus' body with spices. And on the way there, they have a discussion amongst themselves because they realise that they are unable, between them, to move the large stone which had been placed across the entrance to Jesus' tomb. And they wonder who is going to do that for them. But when they get there, they're actually astonished to find that the stone has already been moved. And so, quite bravely, they enter into the tomb and to their utter amazement they see a young man there dressed in a white robe and he's sitting at the right hand side of the tomb. And quite, quite naturally the ladies are absolutely spooked by this. It, it frightens them and so the first thing this young man says to them is don't be afraid. He tells them that he knows who they're looking for. And he says, you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. But he's not here. He's risen. And invites them to see where Jesus has been laid in the tomb because he wants to prove to them that he's not done anything with him and he hasn't uh, put him somewhere else. But then he says these seven words. But go tell his disciples and Peter. He's going ahead of you to Galilee and he will see you there, just as he told you. I want to focus now on those two words and Peter. The three women had clearly seen an angel. Now, one of the things that angels do or some angels do is to carry messengers from God to people. And on this occasion, the angel had been sent with a message. Now, one of the things they don't do, they don't edit the message that they're given. They don't ad lib. They don't add things in. They don't put their own spin on anything either. So the message that he delivers is tell his disciples and Peter. Now, he didn't tack Peter's name on just to give him some special status as a disciple. Why do I think that these two words were so amazing? Why not tell the disciples the women would have clearly understood that as a message? Or why not tell his mother Mary? Because surely she of all people would want to know that Jesus was okay, that in fact he'd risen, he was alive again. Why not tell his disciples and Pilate and put the fear of God into him, literally. No, it was Peter. Let's be clear that God doesn't have favourites. Now, apart from Judas, who by this time was dead anyway, which disciple more than any other regretted what had happened? That Jesus had been crucified. Well, of course, at one, one level, we could say that they'd all left him. They'd all deserted him. 
They'd all let him walk to the cross. Nobody had intervened. But one disciple stood there and watched. And he knew that he'd let Jesus down badly. Not once, not twice, but three times. Remember a few days previously, it was Peter who'd vowed to die with Jesus if it was necessary. Which disciple was so shattered that he wouldn't even have called himself a disciple any longer? Which disciple had given up on himself to the point where he was going back to his past life as a fisherman? But which disciple was God going to use centrally and powerfully to establish the future of the entire church? And of course, the answer to those three questions is that it was Peter. You know, I don't know about you, but when we mess up, and I mean really mess up, we think that's it. There's no way back. But this message really reminds us that Jesus loves to restore people who've fallen, who've let him down. And we do let him down sometimes. Perhaps you need to take this message from God this morning and insert your name on that last page.